Big crew. Yeah. Come on upstairs for a few minutes. <laughs> You can take one home. You can take them home. We have. Oh yeah, let's. We got extra for you. Nice. You get a hotel. Sonnet. So it's your sonnet. 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 Nice. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Okay. All right. Welcome. Welcome. You have two. Say your name. Wisnu. 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 It's going to be a long day for you. Well, real honor. Okay. All right. So the short version of what's going on is, as I said before, we have a group at Altspace from Williams College in Massachusetts, and they're here as part of a project with an organization called the Ghana Think Tank. And now what the Ghana Think Tank does is they put out basically issues that are being exper experienced um, in communities in the U.S., and they reach out to countries that would, you know, generally be considered, you know, like third world or less developed countries, but uh, places where they may have a little more ingenuity because they're used to resolving issues that, you know, we, we're not just throwing money at things, but really coming up with grassroots and community generated solutions to I guess what we're not not first world problems but problems being experienced in the so-called first world anyway so right now we are at the James and Grace Lee Boggs Center for nurturing community leadership and we've just had a conversation with Richard Feldman and now we're gonna be going with Richard on a tour of Detroit and the group includes some folks from Morocco there's one gentleman here from Serbia and there's a group from India Indonesia. And so, um, anyway, you're all coming with me, so let's go. You ever done this part of the tour, Reggie? I've never done this, this part of the tour. New. This is, uh, Shay makes me do it. Like, go around. But this is all because of you. I'll tell you why. Oh, wow. So you're, you're from many decades, hundreds of years ago here. Make a left. We say, I will say it in Arabic and I will try to translate it. So, <coughs> Assalamu alaikum ya ahl al makan. Andum Sabikun, one Hanu Lahikon. So, hi. Uh, yeah, hi, you are the first, and we are the followers. Please sleep in peace. Yeah. Oh, thank you. God so, bless you are the you. first, and we are the followers. Yeah, so you are the first, we are the followers. You are the first who died, we are the followers. So, we come here because part of this particular space is indigenous Anishinaabe. Indigenous people came here a thousand years ago, which is very late for this part of the the, 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 the northern hemisphere. Usually, people were ten thousand years ago were here after the ice age and stuff as it melted away. But here is much later. And and but we come here because we want to give a sense of how the land a thousand years ago was like this, with all its beauty and you know, bumps. <laughs> bumps, bumps, bumps is a good word, bumps is a good word, um, and, and how people have made choices to change that. And this one was called Bloody Run Creek because Chief Pontiac and many other tribes came together and they fought off the Europeans for six months. And it was a period of resistance, the beginning of resistance that we now can see has been expressed in Standing Rock, familiar with what's happened in Standing Rock most recently, right? So we come here because we want to give a sense of the resilience of the land, and we want to give a sense of resistance happening a thousand, three, 300 years ago. There were 15,000 people would get off of streetcars or walk to work, okay? And they came from all over the world. Folks came from Mexico, they came from Europe, they came from the Middle East. And they also started coming from the South. African Americans started coming from the South. It was part of the Great Migration. Great Migration in the United States refers to 1905 to the late 1960s, when five to six million African Americans moved from the South to the North. Okay. And they moved from the south to the north, 
not because this was just only a beautiful building that was going to make automobiles, but because life was so intolerable in the United States, in the South, for African Americans in particular, right? Because of the history of slavery and racism, right? What that meant was Jim Crow was a period of, of lynchings. Jim Crow was a period of life being so miserable and dangerous. So the way I like to talk about it is folks get very upset with ISIS now. And they say, how can anybody behead somebody? Well, we were doing that on a regular basis in this country, not more than 100 years ago. It's important because our country has never come to grips with what it means to have a country that respects all human beings. So we've never looked in the mirror of, of this whole history of slavery and racism and why Donald Trump won the election and why Democratic Party politicians never have a clue of what to do because nobody wants to look back so that they can really create something looking forward. I have a question, uh, Myrtle. Uh, you said that you you don't believe in owning land, but you hold the title, mm -hmm. which is important. That's an important distinction. Could you mm -hmm. talk about that, the difference between owning and holding the title, and then how that difference manifests in your work? At one point, Native Americans didn't believe in ownership. What is what is ownership? What is mine? I mean, how can you own the land? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I hold fast to that. I think it's very relevant. Um, I, I believe... Um, that where I'm, where, my, where I'm placed is where I'm supposed to take care of as well as where I travel. But the ownership is unnecessary. That imparts a whole lot of responsibility on someone. And it's the same with water. How can you own something that floats, that falls freely? I mean, I don't believe in the privatization of public spaces and, and commons and things like that. And I think going into a future, more, more folks believe, as I do, um, I think the truth will reveal itself. So, yeah. Oh, sure. Not not to get too deep, <laughs> but that's just important. you know that's you. in reality that's uh, I think what is the real truth. So um, to come away from that individualism and that avaristic mindset, you know. Thank so. you. Great question. Yes. Um, what other projects are we working on, working on right now? We're working on the 291 restoration uh, project. That's a, a residential house that we have down the street, putting it back together to turn it into the Freedom Freedom uh, Dialectical Humanism Center, <laughs> or whatever great name we call <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, but we want it to be a cultural hub uh, in this space um, to fill in those gaps, um, sort of like a freedom school almost. But it could be many things. It could house folks. Um, it could be a meeting space. We're working on our, uh, we're part of Grape Sea Detroit, which uh, we have grape vines mm. planted. Um, uh, and we're learning how to take care of those little babies and grow them and work to uh, bring others into that fold. We have berry bushes and we're trying to develop a small you pick for our uh, toddlers. So uh, we do our youth mentoring program, we do our round table discussions monthly, and we do cooking workshops in the summer when we have food that we can use from the garden. So we're really trying to healthy up ourselves, one family at a time.